The shoe conundrum. What should I run in? Because if I want to run 50 miles, I don't want to run it on road. So I will probably run on trail. 50 miles on road. I don't believe my joints are gonna like it. To run on trail, I need to train on trail. It may be a bit tricky because winter is coming. Winter in our midst is, well, a bit wet. And I'm quite attached to Brooks. Then again, this is not sponsored. This is just my experience. I have this Cascadia, Cascadia GTX. This pair looks a bit scruffy already because I've been running it. It's not new off the shelf. But then some of the trainings I have to do on the road and I do all the tests on road because tests on trail don't give right readings. I believe on the road surface, it's not going to give enough cushioning. What I'm trying to say here is one of the problems that I need to solve. Should I have two pairs of shoes? Should I only use this one? Maybe I'll consider buying myself another pair of shoes. To date, this has been holding pretty well. I've only done about maybe 100 miles in this. Typical Brooks shoes survive just a bit over 500 miles. After that, they become a bit wonky. Uh, we shall see about these. They seem a bit sturdier. And also, when I run on trail, I believe the impact on the shoe itself is a bit lower. 400 miles to go anyway. Okay, stop with the blubbery. Time to run. Five minutes warm up. 14 minutes run at a very slow pace. It gave me slower pace today because yesterday I wasn't really performing well. That's a very slow pace. If you are an experienced runner, you know that that's a very slow pace. But here is where I am and we'll see the progress. Two words. Wooden legs. That's the price of not running. 19 minutes of torture. I managed to stay in the recommended speed range, but my heart rate again went sky high. And the main goal of easy runs is to run easy. So for all of you who are only starting running, if you follow me, my advice is run slower. When you feel like you're exhausted, when you feel like you're breathing your lungs out, that basically means if this is a slow run, you have to run even slower. Get yourself the cheapest running watch possible if you can't afford an expensive running watch. The only feature that you require is for it to alert you when your heart rate goes above a certain threshold. It all depends on your physiology, but on average, stay below 150 BPM. If you see that your heart rate goes above 150 BPM, slow down, walk, let it settle below 150, then run again. That way you can run longer. If you only can run one minute right now, that's probably not because of your legs. When you only start running, the first system that gets trained is your cardiovascular system. Take this advice with a pinch of salt. I'm not a trainer. All I know that works for me. It may not work for you. Take it with a pinch of salt. As far as I'm concerned, I have no run tomorrow. So I'll see you in a couple of days. Cheers. I want to scream. Like tomorrow doesn't exist, like it doesn't exist.